Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here with a short video on the saturable reactor or magnetic amplifier. Uh, what these allow you to do is to control a very large load of AC with a very small input of DC. Uh, so by using a few milliamps of DC we can control an AC load in the order of amps. Um, now using this sort of assembly you can get a gain in the order of millions um, so they are a good substitute for vacuum tubes and transistors depending on the application uh, I do have a quick demonstration to show you but before we do that I'll give you a quick rundown on how these work now I stress that this is a very basic uh, explanation um, and there are books that you can get to learn more about this and I will leave some information in the description. Uh, so generally how they work is that the AC load circuit is wound onto a magnetic core and the DC control circuit is also wound onto the same core. Um, the AC load circuit will cause an alternating flux within this core which is always changing in both direction and magnitude uh, the DC circuit will cause a flux which is always constant in its direction and magnitude. Uh, this DC flux always affects the AC flux and vice versa. Uh, so by altering, by using this rheostat, by altering the DC flux within this magnetic core, we therefore control the AC flux which is in the core, thereby affecting the reactants in the load winding and controlling the load. So that's pretty much how it works. Uh, they do become slightly more complicated and this drawing really just shows you the basic operating principles. Um, and there are better configurations uh, for these sorts of reactors and magnetic amplifiers including three-legged cores and cascaded assemblies uh, but they all generally run on this same principle. Now what I have here is two transformers that I have stuck together with a piece of double-sided tape and I've also got this black cable tie holding them both together. Now going by our circuit diagram that we just looked at um, what we would usually have is AC coming in here and going through this winding and then out the other end of the transformer um, out to the load and then back to the alternating current source forming the load circuit um, and then on this side we would have the positive and the negative um, which would form the control circuit. What I have done in this case is that I have cascaded two transformers so the end of this AC wind goes straight to the start of this wind which then picks up here so we've split the, um, the AC over two cores which will aid in saturation and reducing our um, AC current in our DC control circuit um, and then again we've done the same thing with the DC so we've cascaded the DC over two cores um, and that is pretty much the only difference between what you saw on paper and what we're about to do here so if we start with our AC load circuit we can see that we've got 12 volts AC coming out here which goes straight out to our load and then from the load straight to the input of the load winding uh, and then straight across to the output of that winding and then back again to the um, AC power supply. So that right there forms our complete AC load circuit. The DC control circuit consists of this AAA battery, 1.5 volt, negative terminal goes straight out to the control winding over here 
and then that goes straight across to the output of that winding from there out to our pot and then from the pot over to the battery so that forms the complete DC control circuit so there's both our circuits and we'll take this pot bring it in close to the um, AC load and if all goes well by adjusting this pot we get an increase in current in the AC load so by using a couple of milliamps of DC we can control AC in the order of amps and you did hear me correctly before when I said that you can get a gain in the order of millions by using a, um, a single stage amplifier like this obviously it's a little bit more complicated and there are other things to take into consideration when you're dealing with higher power um, especially in regards to transformer action and AC current finding its way into the DC control circuit but um, all of these issues can be overcome and that right there is a magnetic amplifier as with all electrical components there are advantages and disadvantages with using this sort of an arrangement uh, but have a look at the information I've left in the description have a bit of a read up on magnetic amplifiers and you might be able to find a use for these in your next circuit uh, but that's pretty much a very basic description of a magnetic amplifier and um, that's all I've got for you so thanks for watching